Welcome to the VTEC Academy. You're about to get schooled. This is the new Turbo L15 B7 engine from Honda. Last year they introduced it into the Civic Sedan EX Turbo, but this year it's actually gonna be available in not only the sedan, but also in a coupe and in a hatchback. Uh, it'll also be available in the 2017 Turbo, in the 2017 CRV, and of course in the all new Civic Si. Now, this engine is available both six speed and CVT currently, I would imagine in the CRV it's probably going to be CR, um, CVT only, and in the SI it'll probably only come available as a six speed manual. Now, looking at the engine overall, it's very compact, uh, much like the L15 that currently comes in the new fit, but that's kind of where the uh, similarities end. This engine has a completely new architecture. The exhaust manifold with turbo is on the front of the engine, the intake is on the back side, the starter is on the back side, and the bell housing has a slightly different shape in order to be able to bolt up to a beefier transmission. So you're not really going to be bolting this motor into your current fit. Okay, let's talk about the mounts because that's what really interests me. Now, all the Civics have pretty much the same setup. They've got a large mount on the right side and left side, that do the job of supporting the majority of the weight of the motor. Now, in order to control torque or engine movement, what they have on the back side is they have a bracket that mounts kind of low on the engine, and then they have a torque rod that goes from that to the subframe in order to control the movement of the car. It's not gonna be particularly difficult to make either replacement mounts or motor mounts to put this in another car, but there's some other things we have to worry about. I think the difficulty is going to be in choosing which cars we make mounts for. If you notice, it's really tall in front here with this intake air tube that comes across the top of the turbo. Most of the Civics that we like, 92-5, 88-91, the hood drops down rather dramatically in the front. I don't think you're going to be able to suck the motor back far enough in order to get this to clear. This may wind up being a much better choice for cars like the Fit. It's got a really tall engine bay. Uh, obviously any of the new Civics, although I'm not sure why you would do something like that. Uh, and maybe even some of the older Civics, like the uh, first and second gen Civic. They had a very square front end, and even the, the third gen Civic, that also had a square front end. But, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of uh, Honda Insights and Fits that are going to be uh, coming up cheap pretty soon, so I think this is going to wind up being a good choice for those particular cars. Let's uh, take a closer look at this engine. Um, there's a lot going on here, and I'm sorry, it's just not pretty. Uh, they have an extensive use of plastic on this new motor. As a matter of fact, they have a plastic uh, valve cover as well as a plastic intake manifold. And then, of course, there's this uh, plastic tube that bolts onto, this is called a uh, turbo joint, where actually the intake air tube and the uh, compressor output are all kind of molded in the same piece. Uh, you can also see there's a lot of other plastic doodads going on, vacuum lines, cooling lines, and stuff like that. I'm just not sure how pretty this engine is going to be, even when things are stripped down to uh, uh, their bare minimums. Uh, wire tuck on this thing would be a freaking nightmare. The turbo is up front for cooling. It's very small and spools very quickly. It has an electronically controlled wastegate. The engine computer controls to adjust boost in conjunction with the electronic throttle body. Honda says this engine has the highest output of any comparably sized engine. Horsepower ranges from 172 horsepower to the X up to 190 horsepower for the new CRV. The uh, horsepower figures for the SI haven't been released yet, but I'm sure they're going to be at least 200 horsepower. On the turbo joint, you have the intake air tube that goes up over top of the engine, which of course contributes to the height of the engine. I will hope somebody fixes that. But with the intake tube and turbo joint being integrated, that might be kind of difficult. There's also a blow-off valve integrated in, which connects to a solenoid valve that's referenced to the intake vacuum or boost pressure, depending on whether you're on or off the throttle. 
Taking a quick look at the back side of the motor, you can see the alternator and the starter on the back side. That's opposite the L15 that comes in the fit. Now, uh, this intake manifold is kind of small with really short runners. Uh, that's not really necessary to have a big one with long runners to create torque when you have a turbo feeding the car. As you notice also, the throttle body is drive-by-wire. This elbow feeds air in from the intercooler. As a matter of fact, here's a picture of the, uh, the engine with the intercooler installed. Directly underneath the intake manifold buried in all this insulating foam are the direct injection injectors that feed the fuel charge from between the two intake valves directly into the cylinder. To get the fuel pressure up high enough to shoot directly into the cylinder and to properly atomize it, there is a mechanical fuel pump here. Underneath this piece of foam right here. Fuel is pumped in in a reasonable 50-ish PSI and then boosted by the mechanical fuel pump to overcome the high cylinder pressures. To ensure good mixing of the fuel charge, the intake ports are shaped to have a ski ramp-like design to promote tumble of the air charge to better mix the fuel. The piston tops are even dished in order to promote the tumble. The exhaust gas temperatures are fairly high to promote turbo efficiency. Heat, of course, can cause pre-detonation, so Honda has put sodium-filled exhaust valves inside in order to draw heat away from the valve face. Also, Honda uses very small water passages and high-speed water between each of the cylinder bores to improve cooling and reduce detonation there as well. Like all the modern Honda engines, uh, the collector for the exhaust is actually built in the head, so there's actually only one port coming out, and there's a very short little distance from that to the turbo. That kind of helps with the efficiency of the turbo by keeping heat in, but it also causes a little bit of a heat problem. Now there's extensive uh, water jackets around that collector in order to prevent that from being a problem with Honda. Now the L15 B7 is not a VTEC motor. There is no variable timing and electronic control for the valves. What it does have though, it has VTC. It has VTC on both the intake and exhaust cam. Now this allows Honda to better control the scavenging effect from the overlap of the intake and exhaust valves. And it gets a much broader range of performance profiles from the engine depending on what load it is. So even though it's not a VTEC motor, they still are trying to take full advantage of their technology in order to make the turbo more efficient. People have been asking me if this is an SI motor. And that's probably because I've been misleading people a little bit telling them that it was. This is not an SI motor. This is actually the same as the EX turbo motor. Now, for my purposes, those engines are externally identical. So if I make a mount kit that puts this engine in that car, it's going to be the same as doing it with an SI. Now, as far as I can tell, the only differences between the SI and the EX motor are three things. One of them is the exhaust wheel on the turbo. Now, uh, this particular turbine happens to have 11 fins. I understand that not only does the SI, but also the CRV, there are only nine fins on that. And what, what winds up happening is that allows the turbo to make more horsepower at a higher RPM. Right now, because of the way this uh, turbine wheel works, what's happening is it starts to build back pressure around 5,500 RPM, and that limits how much horsepower it can do. With the nine fin model, they're able to rev it higher and make more horsepower. And uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar how horsepower works, but uh, after uh, about 5,252 RPM, horsepower starts to kind of surpass your torque curve. So what winds up happening is the higher the RPM you can make the horsepower, uh, the torque, the more horsepower you're gonna make from that torque. Uh, one of the other differences on uh, the SI motor versus this motor is the camshaft. Now, uh, I'm not sure if the cam profiles themselves are different, but there is a lobe that actually drives the fuel pump. And the lobe on the SI camshaft is slightly taller. That's boosting fuel pressure. Now, that's probably necessary in order not to overextend the duty cycle of these particular injectors. Uh, and it may even be necessary in order to, to uh, overcome increased boost pressure. Uh, the third, ish, uh, the third uh, difference, I think, is going to be the clutch. Uh, as I mentioned before, the uh, dual mass flywheel uh, on the uh, EX motors uh, is really there kind of as a comfort measure, 
I don't think that uh, uh, it's going to be as durable as Honda would like for the SI motor, so they'll probably put a single mass uh, flywheel on that, which would uh, require a slightly different setup. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, uh, I can't wait to figure out what kind of car I'm going to put this in. Uh, we tried it in our 81 Civic and it uh, seemed like it would be fairly easy to make go in there. I haven't had a chance to pull out my 77 Civic to take a look at that. That's really the car I'd like to put it in. I would love to have the latest generation motor in the first generation fit. I think that would be fantastic. But if it seems like it's going to be too much work to put that in there, what I may do is I may put it in an 86 uh, CRX or maybe an 86 Civic sedan. I have a couple of those, I'm sorry, not sedan, hatchback. I have a couple of those sitting back there. Uh, they're not doing anything right now. Uh, that might be a valid choice for this engine as well. Anyway, uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook at uh, VTech Academy and of course YouTube at VTech Academy. We're also on Instagram. Uh, and please support us. Buy our t-shirts. Uh, those help us bring you more videos. Thank you very much.